White-tailed deer are fascinating animals, and hunting them is one of America's most favorite pastimes. To be a successful deer hunter, you really have to understand how the whitetail's habitat, and behavior, and even biology change throughout the year. So let's go through a season-by-season -season guide to a white-tailed deer's life, and we're gonna start with spring. Although humans begin their year on New Year's Day in January, a whitetail's year really begins in the springtime. Bucks who shed last season's antlers during late winter begin growing new racks each year in early spring. These small, velvet-covered nubs will turn into towering racks in just a few months. Spring is also when does give birth to their offspring. These fawns, as they're called, generally are born in late spring, depending on when the rut occurs in your part of the world. With an average gestation period of 200 days, does that were bred in November typically give birth by May or early June. If you see a freshly born fawn and count back 200 days, you can determine when the doe was bred, which can be useful information when hunting bucks in the fall. Spring may be the season of birth for whitetails, but summer is their season of growth. Growing fawns nurse daily on their mothers throughout summer. This requires does to consume enough calories and water to sustain themselves and their nursing fawns. Consequently, the demand of nursing fawns paired with the hot days of July and August means summer is a stress period for does. Fortunately for them, summer can also mean a time of abundant nutrition. Essentially, there's food everywhere. Native browse is thriving and farmers' row crops provide vast swaths of food high in digestible energy. The nutrition is essential for a buck's too. During summer, a buck's rack can grow an inch per day. Bucks can be found hanging out with other males in bachelor groups throughout summer. You'll likely spot these bachelor groups late in the evening feeding in crop fields, packing on calories needed to carry them throughout the fall rut. As summer ends, the buck's testosterone levels rise, which leads us to the fall. Fall is the most anticipated time of year for deer hunters. In September, bucks will shed the velvet from their racks and break from the bachelor groups they spent all summer with. During this early fall period, fresh buck signs such as scrapes and rubs will become more visible in the woods. The rising testosterone that began increasing during midsummer will reach its peak during the fall. This rise that initiates the breaking up of bachelor groups also makes bucks more aggressive causing them to spar and fight with the same bucks they bachelored with during the summer. Along with their testosterone, the buck's interest in does increases too. As November and the rut nears, bucks expand their range in search of does to breed. This is the behavior hunters everywhere wait for, as love-struck bucks become more visible during daylight hours, increasing the likelihood of hunter success. Just as deer behavior changes from summer to fall, food sources change too. Hard mass crops like acorns attract deer, as does soft mass like apples, pears, and persimmon. Unfortunately for the deer, these food sources can dry up as quickly as they appear on the landscape. This usually coincides with the beginning of winter. Winter is the season where whitetails have two objectives, recover and survive. Another stress period, winter hits post-rut bucks hard. Having lost much of their weight during the rut, bucks have to replenish their bodies as food sources wane. The abundant food sources of summer and fall are now gone, requiring deer to eat much lower choice food sources. This can be hard on does too. Since they've likely been bred and are carrying fawns now, they need calories not just to survive, but to develop their offspring. Whitetails can be found staying close to their bedding areas in winter, venturing out late in the evening to feed on ag fields. Similar to summer, you can find large groups of deer feeding on crop fields this time of year. With the rut in the rearview mirror, testosterone in bucks begins to fall, which eventually causes them to shed their antlers. This casting of antlers generally happens during February and March, but it can be earlier or later depending on various factors. Not too long after they shed, bucks will begin regrowing their racks, and just like that, nature's cycle begins again.